Where were you when Pearl Harbor was bombed? Magdale Field, Tampa, Florida. I had been in the Army six months. When Duran the third came, he was our mail boy, he came, he blew the whistle and they all rounded it up and he said, fellas, uh, the bomb I heard about. We knew that there was a war in it. Yeah. What was your parents' reaction to the news of the bombing of Pearl Harbor? I don't know because uh, we were writing letters then, but I imagine that they got the news at the same time we got it, maybe. On radio. Where were you? Where were you? Um, where were you stationed? Magdal Field, Tampa, Florida. In the Pacific or Europe? Oh, yeah. We, oh, I thought you meant when the bomb fell. Oh, are you still talking about what? Yeah. <laughs> See, I already told you that uh, um, I was at Magdal Field, Tampa, Florida, and I, if you want to know where I was I stationed when. When uh, I was overseas, I have to say the Pacific. Okay, the Pacific. Yeah. Did you know anyone that was Jewish? Uh, not during that time. I, I knew Jewish people from back home, you know, mm -hmm. because they're the one that uh, sold clothes and all that. We, we bought our clothes from the Jewish people. You know, our suit, we, we had our suits made. I knew Jewish people. What was your opinion of the treatment of the Jews in Europe? Oh, I was, uh, I was sad about it. In fact, we knew that uh, the Jews was being uh, mistreated and being killed, but we had no, not the least idea that they were killing that many. <laughs> what was your life like before the war happened? Before the war, we lived on a farm, and we, we found for our living cut sugar cane in the winter time and we had six acres of land, my dad and I and my brother, we worked the land and we planted shallots for our money. We earned money with on shallots. It's something like a green onion. And uh, we had a lot of fun because uh, I had so many boys around my age during that time and we always had great competition and everything, playing baseball and we played hard during that time. I always had a good baseball team. How how did your life change that now that you were in that you were in the service? Did uh, you, how did your life change during the war? After during the war. Like did you have a tough schedule? Did you have tough training? When I went in... When you went in the war? When I went in the army? I, yeah. Oh yeah, well, I, yeah, I was excited about going in the war because I, I, was, uh, I was drafted. I was, dra I was drafted and I volunteered. Me and my brother, we... Uh, we we're together 19 months, we should have one, 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 next to one another for 19 months. And then we had a lot of fun. Uh, soldiers were very important. You know, they were glad to see soldiers. And we went to town, you know, boy, boy. We were pretty excited to see it. Did you miss your family a lot? <laughs> no, I had planned on getting away because my dad always said that. He hoped we would, uh, he hoped that day we would go in the army or go somewhere and see something. He see what was what, what going to happen to us all, you know, the football and the same, the right, right, you know, I mean, go to church. He had already been in the army and uh, he knew where it was to, uh, you know, meet different people in no place. So he was all right open that day we would get away with them as a small place and kind of see the world. So, I was excited about leaving home, you know, yeah. Were you injured in the war? No, I wasn't injured. I hurt my shoulder, but not from, no, not from battles, you know, I mean, I hurt my shoulder. I think I was playing baseball, <laughs> yeah. 
Was your brother injured in the war? No, my brother wasn't that injured. Um, what was your specific job, specific job in the army? We built roads. Built roads for, uh, well that was our main job, building roads and what else? And well, I guess setting up tents and building, well mostly building things. And uh, we uh, had, we had, uh, well in my outfit the guy that, that uh, did uh, that uh, did, did our water, you know, I mean, that uh, purify our water and everything. They had that machine and everything. Get the deep canal and dig down in the bottom and and get and pump the water and purify it. And uh, that was the main thing we had was building roads. What was your brother's job in the army? Oh, he was in infantry. Infantry, the people that you know, handle our rifle. They they do the actual fighting. You know, I mean. And uh, my brother was a staff sergeant. That's about that's about the top of the what you call the oh boy, I forgot the sergeant, and and that's another another step would be the staff sergeant. Three straps up and one down with a little thing in the middle. So he had. Four stripes. I only had two. <laughs> what was your title? Corporal. CPL. That corporal is one grade below, I mean above, a PFC. PFC is a private place class. Mm -hmm. Do you have any flashbacks or know anyone that has flashbacks of the war? Like nightmares or flashbacks of no. the war? No, I know my brother, he had problems when he came out. You just sleep a little while and wake up and look around, see if anything coming. <laughs> but I didn't because I was not really in a man battle. My biggest problem was trying to escape when the, when they would blow the, when the siren would blow and let us know that the airplane was coming so we could scoot away and get everybody getting their own foxhole. That was, the reason for that was, so if they drop bomb, they won't be killing a whole lot of men, you know. I mean, every, you get in your individual foxhole, now you might get a direct hit and a bomb fall on you, you know, that's it. For it. But I mean, when all that stuff starts flying, you're down up on, in the ground, you know. So that was the idea of a foxhole. <laughs> Were you segregated from um, other people, other, the white people? Yeah, yeah, we were segregated because uh, when I went in the Army, we was in the 8th Aviation. And the 8th Aviation was uh, place, uh, the outfit where the, the guy that flew the plane and they were white. They were white, you know, and our, the name of, my outfit was eight aviation separate. That separate, you know, distinguish who you were, you know, I mean, separate that mean that we had nothing to do with the airplane. We only clean up the runway, you know, build runways and all that kind of thing. For these black people that were flying the plane. What was your opinion of the treatment of the Japanese and American? Oh, now that I I didn't know this was going on, I was in the army, but since I look back at it, I think we, we it was a shame that we did this to some of, some of our best citizens. And I think America was shame of what they did to the Japanese themselves. So uh, I thought it was wrong. Did you I, know any Japanese people? No. No, I didn't know any Japanese people doing that. No, I, I didn't know any Japanese people. Do you feel that America was right to drop the bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki? Um, the atomic bomb? Oh boy. You know, I, I imagine a lot of life was saved because they did that, but uh, I thought it was kind of 
inhumane, in, you know, I mean, I don't know, they probably could have done it another way, but we probably would have lost more men, so, but I'd rather take the side and say that, uh, no, they shouldn't have dropped it on them. Do you have any good memories of wartime? Any good memory? Yeah, good memories while you were in the war. Well, there's mostly the guys I met, and uh, to, it was a shame that uh, all the address I had and everything, when when we were leaving the Philippine Island, I had all, I uh, collected all the names, you know, to stay in touch with the boys, and, and uh, my, what you call it, it wasn't double back, well, the thing that we, well, I, all of the, you know, thing that I had treasured most was in this. Uh, a type of suit, a bag? It was mostly, it was made up, you know, after, after we pack our stuff and put it in, in uh, bags, duffel bags and all this, you know, then they put it, but anyway, but I never did get it. And they, they told us that uh, while unloading, one ship to the other, it probably part fell in the sea, but we rather than, we believe that these Filipino guys, they took everything they could, you know, I mean, they were stealing, stealing our stuff and making it away, so that made me, I never did get in touch with my friends after I left the army. Had all the address and everything in my book. And I think, but that even to this day, I, I sure would have wished we had a reunion of, I'll see those boys again, but uh, I never did. Uh, it was hard for me to leave when it was my time. I had, well, I forgot, we left by points. So we, I left some of my friends over there because I had more points than them. But then, anyway, uh, I forgot how many points you had to have. After the war, so. I have memories of leaving those guys and never got in touch with them again. Um, are there any songs or movies that remind you of your time in the army? Um, I, I didn't know if this is the title of the song, but uh, when we were leaving, they played Send the Word, Send the Word, over there, over there. The Yanks are coming. And we won't be back till it's over, over there. Kind of made you felt like heroes, but uh, after that ship was going further and further out, and we had never had this kind of experience, so the ship started going down, and everything. <laughs> hey, this thing here, you know, we didn't feel too much like heroes then. You started getting scared, you know, that. Because the ship was going further and further in these waves, and sometimes. And the ship was hit, and just, you can't, couldn't see, you know, almost gone, you know, in a big wave. And you look back home, you start thinking about everything you ever did from when you was a boy, and ever, on, from a child on up, you know, you start thinking about your mom and dad, you know, and I, I wonder if they know where I am now. You know, you start thinking about the folks back home, and you don't know if you're coming back. Um, talk about how you thought White Christmas meant, the song White Christmas, how it, how you thought it meant Sad Christmas. Oh boy, I had, when, the first time I heard White Christmas was uh, overseas, mm. and I, I misinterpreted, I thought uh, White Christmas meant sad, you know, and uh, I remember in all that heat and sun and everything, uh, everything, I wrote a letter and told my mom that I would have it a white Christmas. But, you know, white Christmas really, I think, meant snow and everything, but I misinterpreted that. I don't know why I thought it was sad, and that's what I was trying to tell her, you know, I mean, it was kind of, I said, well, hope you all have a good Christmas because I'm having a white Christmas. <laughs> you know, that heat, and I was so ashamed after I found out what it was all about. When you came back home, um, how did it change you? How was your life after the war? After the army? Oh, we had to. It was really exciting and some of the songs 
that uh, they were playing during that time, you know, it, it just fit the occasion, you know, like, uh, hey, everybody, let's have some fun. You only live but once, and when you did, you're done. Let the good time roll. And then that, you know, Louis John was singing that, and, you know, it looked like that's what we wanted to hear, you know, let the good time roll. Everybody had some money, you know, that what you call mustering out pay. And we had money in our pocket and spending money. And and then, uh, well, I got married. Two. After, after I got married, oh, I must have married. Maybe about a month or five weeks after I came home. Came from home. Who did I you mean, get came, married to? Uh, Who did you get married to? My, my wife, I tell you. My brother, Dr. Harmon. Well, well, she was young and then, but, uh, and then I already told her that we would, uh, we would have a new moon, you know, that I would take it. Take it to our and then we ran out of my boy's side, named Moses. And uh, I told him that uh, he lived in my mind, or my mind, or and I told him I would come out my hand. His girl and my mother and all on the, all on the motel. So when we got married, we went on to Miami, Florida. He already had the room waiting for us when we got there because he knew I was coming. I wrote and told him that it was coming. Well, my life changed. But then we were on spent out of money. I got broke and everything. And like, like, we like, 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 and uh, then by all of the other you have had experience of being there and have been to this place, they all have been to this place, different places, you know. And then that's all the way to my kind of little brain and start to get married, going to a different state. And then I guess. The war came and kind of, after the war, you know, I kind of grew a little thing about the routine in the area of the Hindu because we were poor people, you know, and most of the war, all the guys, you know, we lived out our family and we were young men, we were kind of aged to marry, you know, and we we were maybe we wouldn't have been able to build homes, and uh, the parents didn't have enough room for you to marry and have your wife too. So looked like the wife, the war came just in time to break this up. You know, start the money in the home and going in the home, and then we came out. Went to the guy that didn't live there. Went to different places, Chicago, Cleveland, and a lot of them came here. Yeah, like, oh, going to different places. 